Hi, and welcome to SVG's new sponsor, Welcome Video. I'm Dan Daly, SVG's audio editor, and today we're here with Max Crutchfield, account director at Sports Entertainment, of Sports Entertainment, sorry, at APM Music. Hey, Max, how are you? Doing great. How are you, Dan? Fine, fine. Very good. You're in a very, very interesting and busy intersection of, of sports and entertainment right now. Uh, you, you can't do sports without music, and sometimes I wonder if you can do music without sports. <laughs> what's, uh, what's the big challenges for production music for sports at this point? Sure, yeah. I mean, it, great question. I think there are a lot. I, I mean, the, this audience is, uh, you know, probably more aware than anyone what those challenges are. But, yeah, a few of them are just, uh, I think, you know, that we're seeing just a growth in the – uh, consumption and demand of content, um, just from an audience perspective, a shrinking of their attention span at the same time. So, um, battling for attention, um, that's, <laughs> that's shrinking, uh, growing number of people battling for attention that's shrinking. Um, and then you also have just greater pressures, I think on creative departments in terms of, you know, resources are also simultaneously shrinking at the same time. So, um, you know, it, it really feels like doing doing more with less is is a big trend. And um, it's and also while while also doing that, you're also needing to differentiate and battle for that attention more. So uh, the search for ways to do that, um, I think, is top of mind for everyone. And hopefully, you know, music is uh one of the things at the top of that list. Absolutely. You know, it's interesting you bring up the attention span thing. I mean, something that we've seen happen over the course of the last five or six years with music, with pop music, is that intros are almost gone at this point. If you're not at the hook in the first five seconds, they'll switch the stream. How are those changes to pop music, which are so important to sports at this point, whether it's hip hop, rock and roll, pop music, whatever, how are those starting to affect the way the production music is produced and arranged? Right. Yeah. I mean, well, you know, well, first it's, uh, it's surprising to me still that there are so, there are quite a few managers and higher ups that uh, it's kind of news to them that they, that their creatives can't just use any song they hear on the radio. Right. Like um, I think that's still, there's still some education there in the upper levels of management. Right. So um, you know, just the fact that they're like, Oh, I can't, I can't use, you know, a top 20 hit in this video is surprised to many. So, you know, um, the, the key there is, is then, you know, how close, and let's face it. I mean, most product, what you consider production music kind of stinks, <laughs> you know? And so that's, that's where we come in, right? Like we're, you know, APM, um, you know, I think is closest to radio quality that, that you could possibly get um, with uh, still having the ability to actually use it in your production and of any type going out, being distributed in any way. Um, so um, there's definitely more emphasis on music as a whole. And also, as you said, just that quick pop in the very beginning, which is definitely a focus for our composers and libraries and everyone else following the trends. Right. You, APM is very unique in that it's a joint venture between two of the biggest labels and music publishing operations in the planet. Right. That's, that's Sony and Universal, right? Sony and Universal, yes, sir. Three-way partnership um, with us and, and those, those two. So, um, you, know, the, you know, the quality is going to be there. I mean, you know, I think combined, uh, they account for, you know, 60 or 70 percent of total <laughs> published music. So um, they know a thing or two. So having that backing is definitely uh, right. uh, helpful. <laughs> right. APM was also a pioneer in, in sports music in, with a, uh, a deal that they came to with the NHL, the National Hockey League last year, to become the sole broadcast music provider for the league and for all 32 of its teams. How's that working out so far? So far, it's working out really well. Um, I mean, I, I would let uh, the, the NHL, um, you know, headquarters and, and the teams, you know, you know, speak more about that. I mean, I'm, but so everybody's very happy. I think it's really interesting how that kind of came about. Um, you know, some of the uh, 
you know, as everyone in this audience is aware, you know, there's been a real crackdown in terms of, you know, DMCA copyright police and, um, and also even what they're policing, right? Like ephemeral use is something, you know, that was kind of, um, you know, they didn't pay as much attention to previously. And then now, now they are. So, you know, leagues are now having to um, be concerned about what's playing over the loudspeaker and venue and taking that and publishing it on social. So there kind of needs to be that cohesive and um, holistic solution to music, right? From in stadium to what goes on social to be what's being produced in the shoulder programming. And so um, really bringing all that together, I think is, is going to be increasingly more important, you know, for every league, frankly. And, um, you know, the NHL is just, uh, they're, they're leading the way in that regard. Right. So. Sports is out is being uh, distributed now through so many different portals at this point, there's broadcast portals, the social portals, as you mentioned, there's streaming portals, there's personal mobile portals, and every time copyrighted music is exposed to uh, to and through any of those portals, uh, there becomes the potential for some some problems. That's what the complete solution that APM is talking about addresses. Right. Yeah. That's um, you know that's one part of it, right? That's a, it's a big part of it, and and you know, and then of course you have the creative side. So like. There are very few things, I think, on planet Earth that um, both the legal teams and uh, creatives probably <laughs> would agree on and, and be happy about. And I think this is one of them that that uh, actually, um, you know, makes makes both of those very different um, departments Great. pretty happy. <laughs> Quick question about genres. We've had the traditional genres for the last, oh, let's say, since the turn of the century, where hip hop plays for basketball and the pastoral classical stuff plays for golf and the rock and roll plays for baseball. What's happening with that? It's uh, it's changed. I think there are. It's not what you'd expect, you know, as much as you would expect. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's uh, there, there's a lot of I mean, some of the top genres, you know, we pull for um, clients like the PGA Tour and the LPGA Tour in golf, as you mentioned, or hip hop and and rock. And then, you know, uh, and then on the other end of that, you know, our NBA and NHL clients can use classical, too. I think it's um, just a product of just uh, creatives being like getting better, you know, constantly getting better and just um, not really pigeonholing them themselves or their sport into one genre, but really having, uh, you know, the content kind of in what they're trying to achieve creatively kind of dictate what they use. And it's just been really fun to watch as a consumer as well. Um, just how, how creative they've gotten, especially over the pandemic when they had to get extra creative uh, in the content they produced. So That was a whole new form of audio, Proud Sound. Hey, man, this has been a great interview. Max Crutchfield, the account director for sports entertainment at APM Music. Thanks for taking the time today and welcome aboard SPG. Thanks, Dan. Excited about it.